Hello everyone, welcome back to the action at the Ultimate Pool Series. Up next, the first of our Women's Series matches, the quarter-final between defending world champion Marion Jude and Anne-Louise Arkell. What a match we have in prospect. Marion Jude was absolutely fantastic at the World Championships, winning that title. Anne-Louise has played very well to get to this point, but has got her work cut out. Mark Shepherd and Adrienne Flickcroft Hurst with you for this one. Good afternoon. Afternoon, Mark. Thanks for having me. A pleasure. Delighted you can be here for what should be, well, I was going to say, should be a good match. Oh, here we go. Marion flukes the ball. <laughs> well, you've got to get them in somehow. That'll work, I guess. It's a good start for Marion. She's been talked about so much since that world title win. This is her first time playing Ultimate Pool event. Everyone's got very high expectations. It's no wonder, really, with how she, with how she plays. You know, she's um, had such a difficult group. Um, she was in the same group as Kirsty Lee Davies, former world champion herself, and she's won three out of three matches, and here she is. Yeah, I mean, it's a, a tough format. It's a good format, of course, for the women's series, because that group stage is kind of nice. Everybody gets plenty of games. Understandably a bit twitchy. Playing out in this arena is obviously very different. The former round matches have been played out on the outside tables. This feels very different when you're out with all the eyes of the audience and the TV audience on you. Anne Louise was taking these out earlier. And she's um, in some good form. She's queuing well, so she'll want to take advantage of this mistake, I think. Yeah, she will, because everyone's talking about her opponent, but she's obviously a very good player and has played very well to get to this point. It's by no means a foregone conclusion. It just happens that she's playing the world champion that everyone's talking about at the moment. <laughs> Play to a 40-minute match clock here. First 30 minutes with a 30-second shot clock and then dropping down to a 15-second shot clock. That, I'd say, typically when we've seen the ladies' matches on the arena tables has been the thing that people have found hardest because it's just very difficult practising. That 15-second shot clock is not something you do very often. No, of course not. Um, it is a completely different experience. But the table itself as well, I, I was caught out the other night by the table because I believed it would be so much quicker than the outer tables, but the outer tables have been playing quicker, I found this weekend. So the the pace wasn't that different and it caught me out the belief that it was going to be a lot a lot quicker um, a couple of times um, but also I find I think for the women where there's been smaller in stature I don't think you realise just how chunky that these ta these arena tables are you know they've got big thick um, outside of the rails the, the wood the, it does um, almost shorten your reach in a way um, so it's a, something that us ladies perhaps notice more, you know, with not being as tall as the fellas, as a general rule. Well, I only saw a few minutes of your match, but it was the right few minutes. It was just as you were winning the six road shootout. So <laughs> I, I came over at a good moment. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I, so many people have said to me about about that, and I hadn't really noticed they were there. So. Um, there was a pretty big crowd around the table, by the way. Probably a good job I didn't notice at the time. At the time, was only the second six red sheets out of the weekend. A couple more last night. Always real moments of drama, especially with a big crowd in the arena. Yeah. Marion's just caught a bit in between here and needing to make sure with this next shot. She may even be tempted to go along so that she can. Yeah, I think long affords the better position. It's just a, a difficult pot. These pockets are quite forgiving up the rails. Generally, really, you're better actually clipping the near jaw, which is kind of counterintuitive because normally on a pool table, that's the last thing you'd want to do. That time she was wide the whole way. I think Anne Louise will feel that she really needs to take these. There's been a couple of mistakes now for Marion, so. I suppose as the match goes on, there'll be less and less of those as they get settled in. So each will be wanting to capitalise from each other's 
in these early stages when it's a bit nervy. Yeah, and I think particularly for Anne Louise, because starting the match as a slight underdog, she wants to get off to a good start. So she's here to play. Different position she's been left here. Oh, great shot. Great pot. Great pot there, and she's in a great position now. That's one of those situations when she hadn't really been left anything easy, so forced to go for the difficult one, which ideally she wouldn't have done, and had to commit fully. She's a great cue to solve. Um, I think because of the likes of Amy, Harriet, um, Emma, Kirsty, she kind of slips under the radar a little bit and possibly hasn't done as well as what she would have liked to have done so far on this tour, but um, she's certainly got the game for it. And anyone who, who knows her of old knows that she's you know, a former England player. Lots of experience, and she takes first frame. Yeah, I think that reaction is a common one. That once you've had a taste of it, you just want to get out there and play again. Sometimes the first time you, there's a lot going on, you don't have a chance to fully take it in. As we see, a phenomenal break from Marion. Red balls look absolutely perfect for her. I think she'll just take the time here, won't she, to work out a route and to uh, make sure she goes the best way because she's got the, the the red at the top of the table that's on its own so she'll probably want to target that before too long yeah so targeting it straight away some people maybe would have been tempted to play the red that's on the black spot but it's just how you see it as you rightly say taking the ball at the top of the table just slightly isolated from the rest and then everything else links up better at the bottom do you think she'll be coming around the two cushions here, Mark? To yeah, I mean, that's usually the, the steadiest way of playing position because it's easier to judge. And there's quite a big margin for error there because if she ends up anywhere sort of middle left-hand side, she's going to be on a choice of balls. It's fine playing this one as a plant. The only thing is, because that yellow is quite close to it, what you don't want to do is end up with the red jammed against the yellow and not be able to pot the second ball. Ideally, you'd want to play it dead slow, just favour the near jaw. Well, in fact, she's gone the other way and played it harder, which is fine. You just want to make sure you get it away from the yellows again. She's in. Apart from being slightly hampered with the cue ball, if she if she takes the red in the middle, um, she's in perfect position here. She looks to be lucky at the long ball. I don't oh. know if she feels that one doesn't go to the middle. I did feel that that ball might have been a bit of a pain. This is now very all or nothing because if she gets this, she's in perfect position because she's going to be straight on the ball to the bottom left. But if she doesn't, yellows are beautiful. Oh, great queuing, mate. Really well. A bit too well. A bit too well. She's going away a little bit here, but she's got plenty of room for her, hasn't she? Yeah, this table is very reactive. You can see people get caught out like that. Not ideal to be on the side cushion, but fortunately the position of the red, it's a fairly easy pot and it's a, it's a relatively natural angle. You could come quite close to the black if she catches this thin, so she's got to be a bit careful. Should naturally be able to get somewhere towards the middle of the table, though. I think she may even... Yeah, she she used the uh, far knuckle to, to give herself the correct angle there, didn't she? And again, happy to leave the pot at distance. Well, not long distance, but into the corner rather than into the middle. And there we see perfectly straight cue action. Oh, a piece of queuing. She did miss one ball in the first frame, but no mistake whatsoever that time. So, let's have a look at Anne Louise's break and also a big powerful break. Good split. The break was really consistent this morning. Um, I think she got a ball off every break. Um, not always the best split, but she was regularly putting balls, which is all you can ask, really. We've watched a lot of pool on this table over the weekend, and it's not by any means been a foregone conclusion. Even those with the biggest breaks in the game have struggled at times. These two ladies making it look very easy so far. And of course, this weekend the rack has been used. Um, 
Yeah, the new time, isn't it, at this event? Yeah, the new Ultimate Fall Smart Rack. That's it. Well, she'll take that. It wasn't quite as intended with the cannon, but she has flipped out the balls into places where they do both pot, even though she's ended a little awkward. The fact she's ended up with quite a lot of angle here isn't the worst thing as it happens, as long as she can miss the cannon on the red above the yellow. And that's not ideal, unfortunately. But she knows, you saw that look there. She's got to find something here now with the eight ball being at the top on its own. Yeah, this is a bit awkward. That red was always going to come into play. She just felt she had to trust her luck and I hope she got a thinner cannon off the left hand side of it. The fact that all the reds are in possible positions makes it relatively hard to play a tight containing safety. That's why she felt it was worth going for a more adventurous attacking shot. She, she won't be too unhappy with that, I don't think. She's tied the red up, but I think we could see her ending up in some trouble here. Unless Marion fancies at having a go, but tricky with where the yellows are. Yeah, it's not a position she needs to have a go. I think the argument for playing a safety shot would be that Anne-Louise will have to come out and hit the yellows, and then ideally she might move them, and, and then that will open everything else up. I don't think there's much value. I mean, she may or may not pot a ball or two first. I don't think there'd be much value in chasing anything. No, she's played the sensible shot there. Great shot. I don't know if she wants to get ball in hand, whether that red would pot. I guess it may actually be a position where she wouldn't be that unhappy for Anne Louise to hit the yellows because it will probably open the red up. She's bang under it now, isn't she? A um, really good shot from Marion there. Yeah, it wasn't actually that easy an escape because of the position of the middle pocket. And even if she had hit the yellows, I don't think anything great was going to happen. So she's got a choice here whether she, she plays straight into this and opens them up or whether she feels she wants to tidy any other balls up on the table before doing that with the option potentially of playing another safety shot later on if she wants. I think she's screened straight back into it. And there she goes. Yeah, positive shot and got the reward she deserved there. The ball next to the eight ball, it's not quite clear from this angle whether it passes the eight ball to the top left. If it doesn't, she may just need to nudge into it at some point when she's up that end of the table. I think she's got the angle now, Mark. Choosing, choosing not to take it, so might not have been there when you're down behind the shot. Yeah, she may have had the angle. I think the issue is she probably wants to take this one up the left cushion because this is the hardest individual pot on the table, so she wants to get this out of the way. It was actually quite a difficult shot the way she played it. If she just needed to roll it in, it would have been okay, but I think to pump it with some topspin made the pot missable. Covering that pocket is of some use to her because if Anne Louise does find a way of potting these two yellows, then at least the black's somewhat tied up. Oh, that's, that'll do Anne Louise there. Yeah, it certainly will. I don't, well, so what's happened here? The referee's called a touching ball. Oh, Actually, that's, that's a bit unlucky for Anne Louise. That's a game changer. Play the loss of turn yeah. shot so easily if, from that if position. If it wasn't for that, Marion had. I've got some difficulties getting that safe because um, Anne Louise could have played the loss of turn potentially and secured that pocket where the eight ball is. Anne Louise is in a world of trouble here because anything other than potting the yellow, she's going to leave a shot at the reds. And even were she to somehow pot the yellow, the black doesn't go. Very hard to see any good way out of this beyond getting very lucky. It's um, very difficult to explain as well just how much these cushions slide. People tell you that they slide, you allow for it, and they slide some more. Yeah, this, this table, the cloth itself is very receptive to spin, but the, the cushions are very slippery. They slide when you're playing snooker escapes, and also when you try and play with check side off the cushions, it 
It can just bounce wide and it doesn't really grip. So, done well to play that plant has opened everything up. I mean, that's an example, she got a bit stuck yeah. on the cushion. Yeah, she did. And that was the check side you mentioned, wasn't it? Fortunately for her, it hasn't been that disastrous. But the, yeah, there are some shots that you can, on club tables with a thicker cloth, you can check the ball off a bit differently. For the most part, this table you take every day of the week to play on, but it's just some idiosyncrasies you have to get used to. Not absolutely pinpoint. I think this will be okay. She just needs to force the white three far enough. She hasn't quite done, I don't think. She ideally wanted an angle that the white was naturally tracking up the table. She can just make that angle. I think she can maybe pinch some of the pockets. Yeah, and the mistake was made from the previous shot. And actually, she got down to play it quickly, but she, she was off angle with two roads to go and didn't seem to give it quite enough attention. I think on that one, if that's the angle she had, she'd have been better screwing back in a straight line, just leaving the white somewhere over the right-hand side of the table, even if at distance. But she's had exactly the same issue again we've talked about, trying to force it through with a lot of check side is a difficult shot. So, is she going to fluke oh, it? Oh, oh. Oh, she wow. is. Oh, what a harsh moment for Anne Louise. The whole experience just takes a bit of getting used to. The break doesn't seem to be taking her much time to get used to, though. Another great break. That that break's um, got be better than what I saw at the World Championships. Um, I felt when I watched her, I really enjoyed watching her play, but I felt that that would have been one of the things that um, was... Slightly weak, slightly weaker, you know. I, I am, you know, just fault picking, but it looks like she's done some work on that. Yeah, I mean, the strike is phenomenal. She's obviously fairly slice of built compared with some of the top male players who are famed for having a big break, but actually generates a not dissimilar amount of pace just through the quality of the timing. You can see a, a, a manner around the table now. I think she settled, even though she's just had that, that fluke. It, she just looks a little bit lighter now. Yeah, and I think the fact the fluke was from a snooker escape, it wasn't like she missed the black and then it went in, which is sort of a bit embarrassing because you're just thinking you've cued it badly. It's not one that'll play on her mind quite so much. Played one or two positional shots which haven't been perfect, but again, understandable. The table is going to play differently from the one she's been playing on the rest of the weekend. We talk a lot as well in the pros about those who were travelling some distance to come and play here, and we, you know, we haven't we haven't mentioned it. Marianne is here from France, um, along with Emily Fasquet. So um, that does have an effect as well, doesn't it? The travelling, the fatigue. Um, a big factor. Yeah, I'm always enormously impressed with the commitment of all the overseas players that travel to these events. We hear plenty of times people moaning about travelling up to Blackpool from parts of the UK. So for the people that have come further afield, it's it's quite something. And it does it sort of adds an extra pressure because you feel like if you've travelled this far, you kind of need to do well when you get here. Yeah, definitely. It's not worth bothering if you aren't going to give it your best shot, is it? So far, she's going to be happy enough that she's travelled over. We've seen some great French players over the year. We've got a couple of them playing in the, the Pro Series now. Christophe Lambert and Yannick Bofis, two excellent French players. Both been having some good results of late. been impressed with Anne Louise so far. She's been very composed. She seems to have done the right things. One or two chances have gone the wrong way, but she hasn't really done anything too badly wrong. Seems to have settled down pretty well so far. Yeah, as I mentioned, she's she's very experienced, you know, and she's she's been around for a long time playing at a high level, so this this won't phase her. She'll be 
she'll be up for this. Nicely played cannon. Left herself at a bit of distance. Two ways of playing that shot. You can see some people play into it a bit slower and try and keep it nearby, but in a sense, probably the safer option just to knock it away from the cushion and just make sure you get the white back into open play. Just got to keep still. Absolutely dead straight, this ball. Ah, oh, that's a good bit of queuing. Nicely played, that is. Just in that. A couple of nice little field shots now that if they come off, they, they give you a lot of confidence these, don't they? Especially when you're nervous, you don't want to be j jabbing at anything and making a mess. And she's actually played that pretty well, although at the first glance you might look at it and say it's not landed that nice. She wasn't quite the natural angle, she had to slightly make that angle. Do you think this doubles from here, Mark? Yeah, I think it probably will just go above the red. It's going to be quite tight. I think it was difficult as well with the doubles. You have to play. With top spin. Yeah, I think she has to play quite a long way around for the cue ball. Can she hold it? Oh, no, she can just roll. Oh, it's gone too what? And that And that's the difference between playing with top spin and playing with back spin when you're doubling. It widens it, doesn't it, when you play with the top. And it, fortunately, she's not allowed for that on the slide there, but. Yeah, I mean, that's actually slid an enormous amount because when you yeah. look at where the white is, she's hit that almost straight, which looked like she'd be going slam into the red, but it's, yeah. it's widened way past that. I think she possibly needed a bit more pace to straighten it back up a bit. So, second chance for Marion. It's on to become a slightly more important frame because big difference between 3-1 and 2-all. Again, she's made the same mistake she made in the previous frame, which is playing for a ball to the centre pocket and ending up the wrong side of it. It just looked like a moment's carelessness of not quite thinking how far down the table you'd need to be to be low on this ball, to have an angle to go back up the table. She's now either going to have to play with pace off the bottom cushion, so I think that is what she's going to do. It's always difficult with that shot. She did well to generate the pace, but because it was quite close to being straight, so that the cue ball, she was all sort of fighting against it, it was hard to inject enough pace. I think with this one as well, the natural is to go in off on the bottom right hand corner pocket, so she'll need to mind her work with this one, with it being such a thin cut if she's, if she's going for the pot. about that one. I think going for the safety probably was the percentage. It felt like maybe snookering behind the eight ball would have been an easier snooker because she wasn't quite sure where that red was going to go. But she, she can obviously pot it. I don't know where if she's actually going to have a shot on the black. Can she just roll it in? Oh no, she's in fact got an angle to come up and down, which is perfect. I think she's perfect to you, Mark. Yeah, she's played that really well. I wasn't sure she had quite as much angle as that, but she's judged that really well. And from a neutral perspective, nice to see the match level at two all. They've both played their part so far. Another great break. The quality of breaking has been superb so far in this match. She generates an awful lot of power for a cut break. Yeah, which isn't easy to do because. You can look at that and think, oh, I'll have a go at that and just hit it harder. But if you don't control the white really well, you have it flying in the air, which is never a good result off the side of the pack because it's very easy to bounce off the table. Also with the cut break, you can have te a tendency to have a lot of clusters, can't you? Whereas, and, th and that was happening this morning um, when Anna-Louise was breaking, however, um, she seems to have found, found the break now and she's getting really good splits, I expect her to... Um, finish these. There's a moment it looked like she could go 3-1 down. She's got a chance now to go 3-2 up. Those momentum swings in a match can be important. That looks fine. She's on the ball to the right centre still. She 
she won't want to be flicking off the eight ball here, Marco. She, she needs to use the pocket that's available. She doesn't need to touch anything with these three reds now, does she? Yeah, that's a good point because although it looks like a big pocket past the eight ball, it's in a perfectly adequate place at the moment. It might end up okay if you hit it, but it, it might end up worse. You just don't need to take that chance. Nicely done, clean bit of queuing, a good angle on this ball just to roll this ball into the same pocket and roll through for the remaining red to the bottom left. Yeah, she's she played that one nicely as well, so looking good here to go to 3 2. Yeah, which would be a big moment because. There's definitely a moment she could have ended up well behind in this match. Deliberately not risking taking the cue ball too far up the table. The eight ball nicely accessible from this end, so just making sure. I think she's naturally going to run into the yellow, which is fine because it will just hold the white, stop it running off. Nicely played. It's nice when your opponent tells you that you've had a bad run rather than. When people say it themselves, it always sounds like an excuse, but it feels yeah, a bit more genuine when somebody yeah, else says yeah. I try very much not to be a victim mentality, you know. Um, that's not always easy, is it? <laughs> it's a recent thing for me to be able to, to do that. So, third look at Marion's break. Not a bad hit. It didn't look quite as good a contact somehow. Visually is the last couple. With the power that she generates, I'm surprised that she does the cut break. She she cues and times the ball so well that I mean I, I'm I'm not a fan. I say it every time. <laughs> but she does she does time the ball so well that it especially on these tables, the front ball bit would be lovely, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't know if that's just by virtue of, she's obviously young still, I guess coming up through the junior ranks, she, she's obviously going to have been quite petite at a younger age, so maybe she found that the, the cut break was the way to go when she was younger and it's just stuck with it. I suppose the petite side of things is something that doesn't come into my consideration, Mark, so yeah, it's a good point now. Either way, she's broken very well through this match, as have both of the players. This has obviously become a massive frame because slipping 40 behind in a race to five is a costly situation. most tactical of the frames we've seen so far just by virtue of where the ball's ended up kind of like you were saying in the last frame that often when you have a cut break they do cluster together and that's sort of the result this time and unfortunately Marion's left an opportunity for Annalise to get her worst ball out and that's a lovely pot yeah her potting at distance has been so good she's, she's slotted in several difficult long balls I think that's helped by um, having quite a compact cue action. There's not much that can go wrong with it because she keeps it so so tight, and but still cues through nice, even though she's shortened the cue action. You know, so often you see a lot in the ladies as well because sometimes cues are too big for you, or you know, when you s still see ladies trying to hold the cue at the end rather than shifting down the shaft a little bit and um, as you can see with, with Anne Louise she, she does keep that nice and tight and I think that is why she gets the pots that she does. Yeah both players have a very sort of textbook cue action it's very simple and effective from both of them. And right on cue she misses just as a big do up. Thanks, thanks Lippy. <laughs> Yeah, it was a, a tricky shot that. It wasn't just the fact she was having to pot it, she was also trying to force the white through, which is what led to that miss. 
Guess if you're going to miss, you're better to do it while you've still got some balls on the table because she's left some traffic and it's not just a, an easy clear up, which it sometimes is if you miss near the end of a finish. I think pretty much as played there, the fact she's run the white through, I guess she was playing to cover that pocket or maybe figuring that if it dropped in she could play a safety shot off the ball on the right hand cushion next. So time now starting to tick down. We're about to hear the chime in the background as the last 10 minutes come into play. The referee will announce that the 15 second shot clock is now in operation. Yeah, that's a nice shot. A lot of distance there between balls. And Louise is in trouble here in this one. Yeah, that was a good shot because now the position of the Reds has got a numerical advantage and the advantage of having two of them in good positions over the corner pockets. Oh, wow. Well. That'll do you. <laughs> That's one way out of that position. <laughs> She'll take that. She did, she did put her hand up, to be fair. Well, what a big moment. If she can wow. pop this ball to the centre and get on the eight ball, this could be an enormous turning point in the match. enough. I think she can clip it back. That was a better shot than it looked as well to the middle because it's actually at quite a tight angle. So this eight ball to go 4-2 up and it's down. What an eight ball that is as well. What a finish. Let's see if um, Anneliese can do another big break. There she is, she's got a ball again. She's got a real spring and a step now, hasn't she? She's focused. Yeah, I mean, she can see the winning line now and she, she's got to make hay while she's got this advantage on her opponent. Not saying she was a big second favourite from the match by any means, but she'll have come into this knowing that a lot of people were talking about her opponent's quality. and She'll obviously have wanted to show her own abilities and she's done that. Admirably so far. Oh, she's been a bit unlucky there. It was a good shot to open that yellow up. The cue ball's just slipped a little bit too far. Does the yellow that's on the centre break line pass to the right bottom pocket? Do you think, Mark? It looks very tight. Mm. Yeah, from that it still looks very tight. Even with your head on a slant. <laughs> it's hard to tell, isn't it? Yeah. I think the fact it was so tight meant that even if it did potentially pot, it probably wasn't the one to take on. That being said, she's just put two of Marion's reds on the rail, so some work for Marion to do to win this frame. Yeah, and it's an important frame for her, obviously, because she's going to have to win all three of the remaining frames to stay in this tournament, or at least a minimum of two of them to get to a six-round shootout. And I don't think she's quite got into that as she wanted to either. She looked a bit upset with how she'd queued that one. She's starting to look a little bit ragged compared with how it did at the beginning. She's probably a little bit surprised to find herself 4-2 down. She's got a chance here as well because this ball cuts into the middle pocket. The white's naturally coming down towards the racking area. And that's a good nudge as well. That's really nicely played, that is, and well judged. She's played that one perfect as well, so nice and steady down the rail. Nice little angle to bounce off the cushion. Perfect on I mean, it. Last yellow, ready for the A ball. Well, this has been some performance so far. Can she close this out? 
possibly landed a bit more straight than what she would have done, but she'll she'll make sure and trust her potting. Yeah, she'd have loved just to have an angle to naturally stun up the table. Gonna have to take the black from a bit more distance now. It's a very gettable shot this, not a formality, but the way she's queued so far. This eight ball to beat the current double world champion. Oh, he hits in. Right, it's good. And it's down. What a performance from Anne-Louise Arco as she goes to celebrate with her friends in the wow. crowd. 